Hello programmers and welcome to your 53rd chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. In this tutorial we'll be talking about batch processing. So first of all, batch jobs are tasks that can be executed without user interaction. These batch jobs are very useful when dealing with large tasks that need to be processed periodically. Examples include logging files, um, recording data into databases, or filing images. Batch processing refers to running batch jobs on a computer system. What we'll see in this tutorial will be first an introduction into batch processing, batch processing in Java EE, a simple use case using the job specification language, and two examples, the web server log example application and the phone billing example application. Now there are many things enterprise businesses need to do that don't really need human intervention like counting the number of sandwiches that were sold in the restaurant and processing the profits and expenses of them. You don't need a human to do this, so a batch job can do it instead. So there are many steps within a batch job. In our sandwich example, there can be a step to first check the cost of each sandwich and another step to count the number of sandwiches. There are two kinds of steps in batch jobs we'll be taking a look at, chunk steps and task steps. So chunk steps are divided into three parts, reading source data, applying business logic onto said data, and finally storing the changed data. Since chunk steps process a lot of data, Java EE allows them to place down regular checkpoints so they don't have to start all over again if there was an unexpected interruption. Another thing you can do is a little thing called parallel processing, which is useful when there are steps that don't depend on each other. This can save a lot of time if done correctly. Now, task steps do stuff other than reading, editing, and storing data. They actively create or remove directories, moving files, creating or dropping database tables, configuring resources, and so on. An example could be that the sandwich operation uh, could have a task step that cleans up the files stored from the previous month. So next are status and decision elements. When lots of batch steps are running, it's important to know what the status of a process is at all times. Batch jobs can have one of three statuses, successful, interrupted, or error occurred. In addition to steps, the batch jobs can also contain decision elements. Decision elements use the exit status of the previous step to determine the next step or to terminate the batch job. Decision elements set the status of the batch job when terminating it. Like a step, a batch job can terminate successfully, be interrupted, or fail. Here's an example of what you might see. So first of all, you have your job that starts off with starting off your application. Then it goes on to the step, which in this case is our chunk step. So it takes an input, it processes it, and then outputs it into a write file. Next, it goes into a task file, which does some tasks, maybe rearranging some stuff, cleaning some stuff. And then it goes to a decision. Either it could be done and it just ends it, or there could be another condition where you have to go on to the next part. So this part is another chunk step, which uh, takes the input, processes it, and then writes it off, and then finally ends the job. So now let's go through the steps on how to create a batch application. Batch applications in Java EE contain XML files and Java classes. The XML files contain information on the relationships of the batch artifacts. These are part of, uh, part of a chunk-oriented step, a task-oriented step, a decision element, or another component of a batch application. While the Java classes contain the business logic of the application. To create batch applications, this would probably be the process of it. So first, you have to design the batch application. You have to specify input data, its format, the desired result, and the processing in between. Use the steps you wish, like chunk, task, and decision elements. Writing the transitions between these steps and trying to see if any of these steps can run parallel. Then you would create the batch artifacts as Java classes. You then would define jobs, steps, and their execution flow in XML files using the job specification language, or JSL. You then launch the batch application, and it's ready to go. So there are many things a batch job can be separated into. First, there's steps, which is basically your chunk or task, which we talked about before. Flows are a group of steps that execute as one single unit. Splits are basically a set of flows that execute in parallel, while decision elements 
Use the exit status of the previous step to determine the next step or to terminate the batch job. Now the simple use case. This section demonstrates how to define a simple job using the job specification language, JSL, and how to implement the corresponding batch artifacts. So over here, we have a little code snippet that shows us a chunk step and a task step. This chunk step will be divided into four topics of interest. My checkpoint, my reader, my processor, and my writer. My checkpoint is just a class that keeps a track of the line number in text file in case we lose the connection to it. You remember checkpoints before? This is what it is in Java code. My reader essentially just reads the input file. The file is split into each line becoming an item and the class combing through these items. Next, my processor. This class is very simple. All it does is convert every letter in the input file to be uppercase. And my writer just writes the process items to the output file. The task step displays the length of the output file. And that's it about the simple use case. Now let's take a look into using job specification language. The job specification language enables you to define the steps in a job and their execution order using an XML file. The following example shows how to define a simple job that contains one checks chunk step and one task step. Let's explain what's going on here. First of all, the job element. The job element is always the top level element in a job definition file. The job element can contain one properties, elements, and zero or more of each of the following elements, either a listener, step, flow, and split. Next, the step element. The step element can be a child of the job and flow elements. The step element always has one chunk element for chunk oriented steps or one batchlet element for task oriented steps. Over here, you can see that this step element has a chunk element in it. So now let's take a look into our example, the web server log. So if we jump into our NetBeans, let's go ahead and open up our project. And let's go into our examples and go to batch and web server log. Go ahead and open that project. So the web server log example application demonstrates how to use the batch framework in Java EE to analyze a log file from a web server. This example application reads a log file and finds what percentage of page views from tablet devices are product sales. So to run the web server log, all you got to do is make sure your Glassfish server is running. Go into your web server log folder. Go ahead and um, right click that and click on run. Make sure you select your Glassfish server and click OK. So what should happen is a little dialog box just pops up. So what this does is it checks all the mobile and the tablet browsers and stuff. And then go ahead and these are all, all the um, mobile and desktop and tablet users that are using our the website. Go ahead and start the batch job. And it tells us that first of all, it started. Go ahead and check the status. And it says that 54 of the purchases of 192 tablet page views are purchases. So that means it's 28%. As you can see, it did it automatically on and on its own without me having to do essentially anything. So now back in our NetBeans, let's go ahead and close him. Go into our services applications. Let's make sure, yep, let's undeploy him. And we are ready for the next one. And now let's take a look into our phone billing example application. Once again, in our NetBeans, go ahead and open project and click phone billing. So this application demonstrates how to use the batch framework in Java EE to implement a phone billing system. This example application processes a log file of phone calls and creates a bill for each customer. So now that it's up, let's go ahead and click on run over here. Go ahead and select your Glassfish server again. And now what it should do is you have our, you have our log file over here. So you can see that all the date times and stuff over here. And what it does is you can go ahead and start your batch job. It started. Let's check the status. Still started. Check the status again. And now what it did is it separated all that log stuff into stuff that like humans can read. Like for example, the price length, the to address, the from address, and the date and time. And that's it. That's literally it. Like this is all 
this is from Duke Wireless account this, Duke Wireless from account this, and so on and so on. And that's the beauty of batch jobs. It can continue doing this periodically as many times as you want without you having to touch it. And that's it. That's all there is about batch jobs and batch processing. Now, in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about our concurrency utilities, which will be the last chapter in your Java EE7 tutorial. After that, we'll be having case studies. Until then, I will see you in the next video.